Now I'm going to tell the camera where the screen is by just touching the button. When I touch the button, the light comes on, and it has seen that point. It has seen this point. It's seen that point. And it's just seen that point. Now, there's an invisible skin over everything, which allows me to use this as a pen or a mouse. So if I use it as a mouse, I can now move this. So my whole surface has just become an interactive whiteboard. Someone nicely just said, this is cool. <laughs> cursor function. I'm going to minimize this just so it's not in my way. And then I'm going to calibrate again, and this time I'm going to try and not kick the cable when I come back. <laughs> there we go. And the next time I calibrate it, it should be bang on. Oh, there we go. So, let's go back here. That is now, yeah, as you can see, we had it here on the white screen a moment ago. This is a kind of an interactive flip chart now. When I take away the white screen, as you can see, the text is still there, because the text is not actually on the white screen. It's on this invisible skin in front of the white screen. So before you move from one screen to the next, you want to erase everything. And can I save it back in the normal white? That's one of the more interesting features out of this Absolutely. So let's say you're, you're going through a lesson with your students and you, you've worked out a nice uh, mind map with lots of different vocabulary everywhere and you've done some brainstorming with the class and you can pull some students up and they can do this too. And then you want to save it all because it's the end of the class and you've got your nice vocabulary list here at the side because we all make vocabulary lists at the side of our flip charts. So. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I want to save this. I can go into snapshot. That will take a snapshot of anything that we can now see, regardless of what program it's in. So PowerPoint, uh, the internet, your, your desktop explorer, Windows, Word, whatever it is, it will take a snapshot as we're looking at it. Snapshot. Now it disappears for a second while I took the snapshot. Just told me where it saved my snapshot. And I'll show you where that now is once I go back to cursor. We'll get rid of this. And here is one I compared earlier. It is there. It's in my C drive. It's in a file called Snapshots. Now, again, I've just forgotten to erase this before I change programs. So I can either use the eraser like in a normal flip chart and just work through edge, Or I can just erase everything. And now it's all gone. And here, in my C drive, set it under Smoothboard, which is the name of this software, I've got my snapshots. Oh, oh see, I'm still in eraser. I need to change it back to cursor. Now I'm in cursor, and there's my snapshot. At the end of my lesson, I can save that, I can, I can send that as an attachment to all my students. So something I do at the beginning of a new course, for example, is I use this to negotiate the syllabus and the contents of the course and the goals with my students. I then mail it to everyone at the end of the first lesson, so that way we're all on the same page, we all know what we've agreed to, and we all know what the goals are. And halfway through my course, I can pull this document up again. I heard that moving in the background. What was that? There we go. Okay. Um, okay, so that's a little bit of the basics in terms of how it sets up and what you can do within a, um, within a flip chart environment. A text tool. Um, that, do you mean in order to type? Uh, not in this version, but in actually the newer version there is, and there are also other versions 
This particular one is called Smoothboard. There's another product called Dabbleboard as well, which will also be in the link. And there are different ones which have um, different tools in them. There's a text tool in Dabbleboard as well. This one is kind of a, it's a good place to start, let's say, without confusing yourself with too many different options. But as you can see, you can work in annotation, which is your white screen. Let me get rid of this for a moment. No, I'm just wondering where you have the keyboard then. You know, would you have to go back to the laptop? Uh, no, there can be a keyboard built in there at the bottom here, yeah. but you will have to use the pen to access it, because the pen is the infrared, which communicates. So this is one of the, one of the pitfalls, let's say, of the software. You know, there are a huge amount of advantages. It's portable and it's comparatively really cheap. Um, the pitfall being is that it doesn't have all the fun full functionality that the expensive ones have. You asked me a moment ago as well, like, am I actually writing on the wall or touching the wall? Not on this wall because it's a little bit rough and I don't want to damage my nib. The nib, the, the, the infrared light will project if I push this button it will also project on pressure. So if I'm working on a whiteboard, which is really smooth, then I can just use it with pressure instead. But because this isn't absolutely smooth, I'm just using it with the light. A nice way to get as good accuracy as you can is to just rest your hand on the wall like you would a pen on paper and just find a position which is good for you. And the important thing is that the camera can see the light. So if I'm standing here when I'm writing, mm. the camera's not going to see anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Much like our students aren't going to see anything if I'm standing in front of that when I'm writing. So we don't do this anyway, do we? Um, okay. Never. 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 <laughs> um, okay, so that is a little bit about the setup of the system and how everything works and communicates with each other. Um, I've given you a few practical ideas already of how we can work with this in class. And I'll give you a few more now. Okay? Um, what did I want to show you first? Um, something else I've done with lessons. Here we go. Presentation vocabulary. Oh. So if you're working on presentation skills with one of your groups, for example, you can use this as the basis for brainstorming in the class. Uh, which vocabulary and expressions do you already know for starting a presentation, moving from one point to the next, and so on. It makes it a little, little bit more interactive because you can write, um, dealing with questions, for example, you can say, thanks for asking. This is a nice way, first of all, to do with your questions. And then let's say one of your students comes up and says, thanks for asking me. And the spelling's not right, then you can obviously just erase that and ask them to erase it. And then correct quickly. So this is also an advantage that that flip chart doesn't have. Again, you can take a screenshot of anything that you're working in, send it all to your students later. You can have this as a heads-down activity with students to do in small groups or pairs and the ones that finish early or the ones that finish first, you don't want them chatting or getting bored, so you can bring them up instead and get them to start writing in some of the things that they've done already. Yeah? Does the speed of writing depend on your hardware? Because it's a bit delayed, it's a bit, it's a bit delayed. It's a tiny bit delayed, yeah, because um, my laptop is a little bit old. Okay, I was so it in does depend on the type of technology. A little bit, yeah. This is an older computer. Um, I was in touch with the developers this week, actually, because when you buy a license key to use the software, it's normally single user only for one piece of hardware, but uh, they said that they will uh, make case-by-case -case exceptions. For example, if you say, I've just upgraded my laptop and I want to use the same license key because I don't want to spend $30 again, then they'll let you do that as well. Um, okay. 